let's briefly talk about hole drilling. First of all, depending on what kind of hole drilling you're going to do, the first thing we want to set up is the tool itself. So we're going to go to the tool setup screen, and we're going to put in the, type, the tool number, whatever the number of this particular tool that we're going to use is. We're going to designate a tool station. So what station is the tool in? Usually tool 2 would be in station 2, but it doesn't have to be. Under the type, we're going to pull down the menu there and select drill. There's also a setting for an indexable drill, which would change the graphic that you see there. Um, in this particular case, this example, we're just using a standard um, drill, so drilling cycle. We want to put the diameter of the tool. What diameter is this particular drill? What offset is the default offset for the tool? Again, just because it's tool 2 does not mean you need to use offset 2. You may want to use a different offset for this program than you did another program. Um, within the block itself, in turning for example, we can change the, prof the offsets being used for individual elements in a finishing operation and so forth. We try to give you flexibility where, where that's concerned. There's a field here, max x offset. That is the allowable distance you can pull this tool off center. Some indexable tools, not the standard tool like we see here, but some indexable tools can be run pulled to one direction or the other. They don't like to either be run right on center or there are some drills out there that will drill from this diameter, x diameter, to another diameter, a little bit larger. and You just simply pull those off center to do that. We would enter the speeds and feeds information for the tool, either in feet per minute or in RPM. Feed per revolution, in the upper right corner there, it wants to know what the chip load is on this particular tool. And it's just going to, for informational purposes, tell you what the inches per minute feed rate was. I skipped over coolant there. Um, coolant will be default. The default setting on all the tools will be primary coolant, which is flood coolant. There's also secondary coolant that we could, could select, which would be something like through spindle coolant, high pressure coolant, which would be um, an option, something that you would add. There's an option for both or none. So we can turn the coolant off on this particular tool if we want. And then for graphic purposes only, we want to put some information in for the tip angle and the actual length of the tool. The whole cycle itself, we're going to determine what tool number we're going to use. Well, in the previous screen we set up tool 2, so we're going to use tool 2. And that should bring in the tool offsets, the speeds and feeds, so forth. That should come in with that tool. Next we have the Z start. That should be something larger than the R plane, but that's where the tool is going to rapid to at the beginning of the drilling cycle. And then the R plane is where the tool would pull out to, for example, if we wanted to um, have some pecking cycles. The Z bottom is the final depth of the particular hole. And the X offset is the amount we want to run off the center of the drill. It cannot exceed the value we set in the previous screen for max X offset. But this is where we would put the value that we wanted to run if the tool was to be run off center. The cycle type, there is standard, which is just going to drill to the end. And then there's a pecking cycle that you can select as well. If pecking is selected, then you see the very bottom right hand setting for return level. I plane, which is the initial plane, that's the Z start value. Every time it pecked, it would pull all the way out to the Z start. Or the other option would be for um, to the R plane, which is just going to pull that hundred thousandths in this example out in front of the part. Again, the speeds and feeds should have been set with the tool. And here I can change those values if I need to. And then tip compensation. If I were to change that uh, from yes to no, that red line would go to either the end of the part, or in this case it's yes, we're compensating for the tip, meaning that we're programming to the full diameter of the drill, not the tip of the drill. If I were to change that to no, then I would actually be programming to the very end of the drill itself.